Welcome to Resume Storyteller with Virginia Franco, bringing you interviews with industry experts and regular folks who tested the job search waters and succeeded, and strategies to tell your story and land your job interviews in 60 days, guaranteed. Here's your host, Virginia Franco. Hey guys, we are live. Um, welcome to this uh, live broadcast. We're so excited you could be here. Um, it's all going to be about navigating job search in a crisis. So let's begin by doing introductions. I'm Virginia Franco. Andy, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? <laughs> I thought it was ladies first. Andy, <laughs> Andy, Left, right, right, right. <laughs> Andy Foot, um, LinkedInsights.com. I'm a LinkedIn uh, brand strategist and uh, networker extraordinaire. All right, Ed, you're next. All right. Mm-hmm. Hey, everybody. My name's Ed Hahn. Uh, I am a recruiter. I'm relieved not to be talking about LinkedIn. Thank you, Andy. Uh, I've, and I will bring the perspective of someone who actually is a recruiter to the conversation. And I'm Hannah Morgan. Um, I am a job search strategist and have known these fine folks for quite a while. So um, I'm glad to be here with you guys. It's going to be fun. And hi, Kenneth. (laughs) There we go. Um, So Uh let's just dive in. Um, The big question that has been on a lot of people's minds is what changes are we seeing since all of this this pandemic has rolled out. Um, What are we seeing in terms of changes to with job search and hiring activities? Um, Andy, you want to jump in? Sure. So I can answer it in terms of LinkedIn. Someone asked me recently um, on, uh, on a Facebook group, actually, I've got a Facebook group, um, group, which is all about LinkedIn. It's LinkedIn action user group heroes. And someone asked me on that uh, group uh, the other day, so has anyone noticed any difference or any sort of change in activity on LinkedIn itself, right? Have levels increased, decreased? uh, What's your take? And their take was, I think actually more people are using it. And which kind of makes sense, right? That you are at home, um, you're working remotely, and you're on a you're in front of a computer screen, so you're not commuting. Why wouldn't we see an uptick in LinkedIn activity? Kind of makes sense, but I haven't seen that personally. I haven't observed that either uh, in LinkedIn activity that I particularly um, observe and study, and I also haven't seen it on my LinkedIn blog, um, or rather my LinkedIn focus blog. So I've actually seen some hard stats on my blog where it's, it's basically gradually and gradually reduced. It's gone, it's gone down, down, down. And it's, it's definitely since COVID one nine. And I find that's interesting because to me, people who, who uh, look at my blog and try to get some LinkedIn Intel and, and knowledge learning, uh, they tend to uh, start looking at my blog on Monday and it peaks Wednesday and then it, 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 it goes back into a trough Friday, and it's pretty low activity on the weekends. But I have that regular, right, bell curve peaking at Wednesday, and I have a set level that I look for. And since January, it's been gangbusters, and beginning of March, ooh. So that's a, you know, that's a hard stat. That's a metric that I've definitely observed, and it doesn't necessarily uh, – there's no, no net correlation necessarily with LinkedIn activity, but for me, that's interesting that I've seen less people, less uh, foot traffic, if you pardon the pun, to my blog. Um, sorry, Ed, couldn't help it. Wordsmith to Wordsmith, you got to you got to do it. Um, but but LinkedIn per se activity levels hard really to tell whether or not more people are at home and and are checking in and doing actual stuff on LinkedIn, and if they Perhaps they're just like, you know, they're viewing other people's profiles, not necessarily mine. But in terms of profile viewing, I've also seen it subside um, by, you know, 20 to 30 percent on what I was was on what I was getting pre-COVID. 
So I'm always the optimist and uh, looking for the good. I'm not really, I'm a realist, but I'm an optimist. And I, I think that I would love to say that um, while there have been some uh, positions put on hold, and I'm going to let um, Ed put talk more about that, I actually have had three people. One person got a job the day after we were on lockdown. Uh, another person has two interviews, both we're going to be in person, but they switched to um, uh, Zoom. So she was practicing video and interviews, and she's an HR role in a healthcare facility. Well, no, really, it's really an educational institution. Um, and then the other person was um, interviewing for a job in uh, manufacturing, like uh, as a you know project manager kind of role. So I, I'm seeing, I'm hearing interviewing still happening, not being cut off at the knees. I think that companies are figuring out a way to they'll stall the start date. Right, if they have to, or they do online um, onboarding. I think that companies are okay with this uh, more than some people would think. So, what I'm noticing is absolutely no change in our organization about how many people we're hiring. Honestly, I extended five, six offers today that were all accepted. So, very excited by that. Yeah. You know, That's um, great. You know what? What it, the, the real impact I am seeing as a corporate recruiter has been consistently. Okay, we the organization still needs more people. We need people because that is what fuels the products and services that we offer. We need more of these things, and you know what? We we are considered an essential business. I work for what is technically a bank, um, so. We are. We certainly are continuing operations, continuing to grow. Um, what it all means for us is that the interviewing process is different now, right? And as as Hannah was saying just or, just before, um, so a lot of phone interviews and, and video interviews, of course, because you know it's simply not smart for anybody to take the additional risks. They don't have to, right? I mean, it's, it's safer for the job seeker, it's safer for the interviewers and the, uh, and the other members of the employer. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. I, um, I have definitely talked to clients where they have said that they, people, they have been located on LinkedIn, reached out to even since Monday, what we're on Wednesday now. Mm -hmm. Um, they're definitely in certain sectors. Um, the layoffs I've heard of, or what everyone's heard of, retail, you know, retail, hospitality, um, anyone who's associated with those. But I actually today took a look at some of the job boards. Um, you know, I've never been a huge fan of using that as the primary point of entry. But what I have seen was a flurry of activity of job postings for sectors that are need to be responsive to the virus. Um, I went to MedReps, for instance, the device companies, the capital equipment companies that are servicing the hospitals. And you can tell that those postings have an urgency to them that normally postings don't. So I found that really interesting. People are going to have to be strategic in, in looking. Um, they might land faster with some of those places. Mm -hmm. Um. So the next question I want to throw out to all of you is what advice are you sharing with people in terms of how they need to modify their job search, given that we're all home <laughs> that is a whole new set of parameters, right? Who wants to start? I'll, I'll go. Okay. Um, one of the things that, you know, obviously the home can be a challenging position, uh, be challenging. We were talking about that before we came on air. Like mm -hmm. there's a family unit going on and, and bandwidth and all of those things. So, you know, I think that uh, as long as you can get a corner of the house that you can do your stuff, you're good. And and so what kind of stuff do I recommend people do? I think that Annie's going to talk more about like the LinkedIn profile and the LinkedIn stuff. But now is really, if you are actively job seeking now because you've been laid off. I'm hoping that's not too many people or that um, you ha were laid off or decided to leave before th th this happened. Uh, it's really the, the next period of time and whatever that looks like is it two weeks, two months. I don't know what it is until things open up more. Um, is This time is for networking. Go back through your list of people that you know and make 
go back and reconnect with all of those people that you used to work with in every company and just ask them how they are, right? This is a great chance for you to use that relationship, that existing relationship to open up a a dialogue again. So touch base with everybody you know. Touch base with your family, your friends, no matter where they are, and, and begin looking at those companies that you would like to work for, the target company, the ideal company and see what's going on with them. Check their social media um, presence and see if they're posting anything. Um, And the other thing that I will say, because this happened a lot in 2009, 10, 11, is that many times companies said they were in a hiring freeze or they were letting go of people, but that didn't apply across the board to the whole company. There are always some positions that needed to get filled ASAP because there was a somebody quit or whatever that was. So don't let the fact that you're not seeing any job postings discourage you. That's not an indication of anything. It just means they haven't posted their job opportunity. It doesn't mean that they're not hiring. And that the, that they are – and when somebody says, well, you know what, we're not hiring right now, that doesn't mean they're really not hiring right now. They, they, they could in the future. So always find additional contacts. Well, who else would you recommend that I speak with there just to learn more about what they're, what they're working on and, and how they like working there? I'm just trying to get information about what's going on. Yeah. So that's what I would do during these next weeks and months is really solidify those relationships and build new relationships with people who can strategically help you. Yeah, that's great advice. advice. Yeah. Yeah, Andy, what would you add from a LinkedIn engagement perspective? What are you advising people do differently? Sure. So in terms of um, how you can leverage LinkedIn, there's um, there's something that I do all the time, and um, if people are familiar with this, then I apologize. But do the um, utilize the browse the browse back. What do I mean by browsing browsing back? So if if you're trying to get on someone's radar, Ed's nodding. He knows exactly what I'm about to say because because mm-hmm. he knows <laughs> he definitely knows this. But if if you're trying to get on someone's radar and you just want to try and open the door a little. If you browse their profile and they they browse you back, then that's a door. It's that's been opened. Right. It's so a they, wouldn't, they wouldn't they wouldn't they wouldn't browse you back if they are not interested, right? Not curious. So that's actually the start of a precursor to the next move. And then right, so what's your next move? Um well the next move if you're not connected would be to send an, uh, a connection invite and the more targeted right the more specific the better right so uh, hey ed um i saw your comment yesterday and i thought i thought you nailed it um i i'm and i and i think this and you know what i'd love to connect with you um if if you're open uh and there are multiple you know different messages that you can send um hey hannah we're we're both a member of x group on linkedin uh i know it's a dormant group but i see from your profile that you're a member of that group on that basis i'm reaching out to connect uh i'd love to uh, or hey hey virginia you browsed my profile recently um you know we have quite a lot in common. In fact, we have we have these three people. Name the three people in common. Uh, I'd love to connect with you, and I'd love to provide access to my network. So it's not just you know what you're trying to get; it's what you can give because you have a network, and yeah, you can you can give intros too. So the browse back, the very specific connection request message, um, Zoom. You know what what we're doing now is a great way to do a, a great thing to do at home, uh, not just with um, company insiders, people that you, you want to be face to face with, but you can't do coffee. Um, do, do the teleconference if they're open to it, but it doesn't just have to be insiders or people that can help you necessarily. It could also be fellow job seekers who you want to form a cabal, a group with where you're basically sharing um, sharing stories and, and, and intel and techniques and uh, so there's a lot you can do, and, it, and a lot of it is, is, is free as well, right? The, the teleconferencing yeah. is free, and it's as, best, it's as best as it gets right now because it's just improving all the time. Um, so those, those, those are some of the things that I would do around, around you know, video conferencing, browsing, leveraging LinkedIn, understanding how it works. I'm so glad that you 
said it's okay to say thanks for browsing because I feel like people worry that that makes them appear stalker, but you know, that just shows to me that you are um, being proactive and that you have invested yeah. in LinkedIn. Um, are you recommending that people take advantage of the 30 day free trial now? Um, you can get a lot more analytics and a lot more insight, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. So as Virginia said, you can now, I mean, you can, you have always been able to, but now might be the best time to, to actually try premium LinkedIn premium. And as, as Virginia said, you get 30 days, um, free, right? So to try it, you're not actually, uh, it's not costing you anything. You can cancel it on the 29th day. It's not going to cost you a cent, but what premium gives you. And, uh, I think why, why, everyone loves premium that has it is it gives you this ability to see the full 90 days of web browsing. So in other words, you have a store on LinkedIn. Uh, how do you sell anything or engage with those uh, prospects, those customers, if you can't see them? Well, LinkedIn premium gives you that ability to see absolutely. Well, not absolutely, but most people who come into your store, not absolutely because as Ed knows, some people will, um, will, will browse you in private mode which of course is something that you can do, right? Often I want to be, I want to be Andy Foote when I'm browsing because I want people to browse me back. And so full visibility is, 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 is always, um, most helpful to me in terms of what I do in my, in my LinkedIn consulting. But if, for example, you wanted to do some, some sneaky, um, stalking without any, uh, any identification whatsoever, then LinkedIn gives you that ability to browse privately, and it can be a very powerful thing. I mean, I, I look at Ed's profile in private mode every day, and he doesn't know. <laughs> I knew uh, it was you. I of knew course, it. I'm not. Of course, I'm joking. Of course, I'm joking. But, but you know, yeah, you you you've got to be aware of that 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 feature, that ability can be useful if you don't want to tip someone off that you're looking. But job seekers, by and large. I think would want to be uh, fully identified and, 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 you know, not private. And what say you, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Go ahead. No, it's quite all right. What were you going to say, Virginia? I was going to ask you to weigh in. <laughs> so I, I love the browse back tip. Um, selectively be, judiciously finding, you, you know, the people that you really want to connect with is huge, right? I mean, I think we've all seen in the last several weeks, of course, that use of social media has been huge because of so many shelter in place or self quarantining measures that people are taking these days. Um, a, a, a quick shout out, by the way, to Ken, Aaron, and Adrian and Valerie. Thanks very much, guys. Um, of all of you, funny thing is, Ken's the one I've person I've actually met in person. Um, <laughs> um, but going back to the thing that that Andy was just speaking of, you know. Um, I am such a big fan of the targeted communication, right? Um, there, this is a this is a huge opportunity to to have these you know really authentic, genuine conversations. Not just because you know you're necessarily oh look, I, I really want to know what it's like at your organization. And of course you do, Mr. and Miss Job Seeker. We understand that. But at the same time, there's a huge opportunity here to say, listen, I'm I'm human. I, I'm I'm trying to be authentic and genuine in the way that I'm communicating with you. I want to just reach out one person to another. I, mean, I think there is a crying need for this right now because of all the isolation a lot of people are experiencing. You know? so, so let me add on to that, Ed, because I think that you're absolutely right. Um, I'm an introvert, and I generally can be okay in my home for a week on end without talking to anybody. But for some reason, I'm craving human interaction these days. And and so what I know is that there are probably a lot of other people who would be a lot more willing to have a conversation in the next couple of weeks than they would have been a month ago, right? So there's something about the situation that makes people feel that are on the receiving end of a request for a video phone call. They're like, oh, yeah, that'll be fun. I got time because I don't have my boss over my shoulder, right? And right. There, there, there's deadlines, but nobody's like <sighs> breathing over my neck. So I think that the people do have a little bit more flexibility and it's low risk. Like it doesn't cost me anything. It doesn't cost me any time other than the call. I don't have to get my car. I don't have to buy coffee. I can just have a quick phone call with you. And when it's done, I go back to my, my cube and do my work. 
So I, I think right. that now is a really great time to leverage this um, space where we can have these video conference video calls. Yeah, no, you know, I, I, agree. I just want to follow up on what Hannah was just saying, if you don't mind. Um, a friend of mine has, has that I uh, actually Abby Kohut meant uh, who you've met, Hannah. Yeah, I know Abby. Um, mentioned to me a couple some, mentioned in a presentation she did uh, years ago that you, she knows someone who every morning on, on the commute has a virtual cup of coffee with someone 15, 20 minute conversation. I love that idea. And that's something that really needs to be more widespread right now. No. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Completely. Totally. totally. Starbucks used to let you have virtual coffees with people. So you could order a coffee um, and have it sent to somebody like a gift Ooh. card. I don't know if they still do that, but I guess you could do it with anybody, any coffee company. You just send them a gift card and say, what? hey, we're having coffee. We're having a call next week. I wanted to send you a virtual uh, gift right. card for, right. for coffee. Yes. And LinkedIn had something similar, but it was more about um, – well, it's, it's it's the kudos feature, right? Which what? I haven't I haven't seen now for. Oh, yeah, for what I don't know. If, that? I think I think I don't know if they're still there. I, there was like a, they they were all the rage, and then they vanished. I saw them crop up again, and then I, so I don't I don't actually know. But it's a you know it's it's a laudable attempt to try and bring uh, additional ways to, you know, say, um, add a boy or or you know. Right. A good job, um, uh, but you know some people didn't like them because they thought they were hokey. Other people just felt, well, they're you know, why would I want to do this? It's like a work anniversary. Well, they're trying to make it more human, right? And and that's yes. sort of one of the things that Ed was talking about. This these conversations aren't like they're not business meetings. They're they're conversations. Right. So there's got to be a personal element there. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And in terms of engagement strategy. You know, I would say to 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 job seekers, uh, but everyone, not just job seekers, but if conversations are are there waiting to happen. So if you if you, for example, follow a hashtag, follow a hashtag that is relevant to your function, relevant mm -hmm. to your field industry, and and start with a hashtag and follow follow where the hashtag goes, and you'll quickly find content which is relevant to you and of of interest to you professionally um but people will coalesce around that hashtag content and you should dive in if you have something to add then this is your opportunity to stick your head above the parapet and 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 you know increase your pro improve your profile or get a profile just start having conversations i think of of comments around posts short form content i think of those as the new groups right cuz this is where people like to hang out right groups forget about linkedin groups groups are just alive and well around comments and posts and and they're not just they're not just comments right they become it, it becomes dialogue they become conversations quickly when people respond to you and linkedin has made have made that really easy by you know having adding a a, a box which basically fills in the person's name for you so you don't even have to tag so i'll i'll, I'll respond to ed and say something to him uh, you know just just responding to what he said and then others can react to that they can like they can like what i say it's like instant gratification it's like oh 40 people liked my my comment well that's all well and good but what's really happening is that you're engaging and you're making new new pals new friends and some of those friends hey guess what they might help you to open doors um they might you know they might there are all kinds of benefits if you dive in instead of hanging by the by the you know, standing by the sidelines. And, you know, the, the big mistake that I see a lot is, is, is people just reacting with a like, right? It's like, eh, a like's not going to help you, my friend. You need to comment. You need to, you need to get out there because a, like a like is not much in, in terms of engagement currency. They're easily spent and they don't, they're, they're, not that, they're not worth that much. So really quickly, and then I want to Ed, to address this question. That but, question, yeah. I'll leave it up to um, it. But Andy, don't you think, too, that one of the, especially for people with small LinkedIn yeah. networks, commenting is one of the greatest ways to grow your network because you Absolutely. don't need to be connected to anybody that you're actually no. commenting on. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
Exactly. That's I mean that's the that's the key mm-hmm. thing here is like there's no dance. You don't ha- you don't even have to do the the connection dance, right? Because uh, you know Ed Ed and I don't know each other. I comment on something he said. Ed thinks, "Wow, that was a smart comment. I like that." Actually, who is this Andy guy? Let me check out his profile. Um and then, you know, but you don't I mean, that's the thing about followers. Followers don't have to be connections. And they're, you know, so LinkedIn is doing absolutely everything possible to help you build uh, different kinds of relationships, whether you're connected with someone, whether you're following them, or if you're just known to each other via comments. Uh, there are lots of different ways that, that you basically can, you know, um, can, can meet, discover, and build relationships with. Yeah, and I would, I guess I would add, I've noticed this week more people that are new to me commenting on my posts so that I don't, that is perhaps an anecdotal evidence that there, there is more activity online. Um, maybe they're following yep. the hashtags. I'm not sure. Um, let's go ahead and answer this question, but I did notice that Andrew Seaman, an editor on LinkedIn, he um, made mention um, for job seekers to follow the hashtag hiring. And then I think the other one's hashtag Corona, is it coronavirus hiring or Corona hiring? Um, I think it's coronavirus hiring, yeah. yeah, for companies to use that. Um, but this yeah. question, um, do HR and recruiters follow topical hashtags and see who makes insightful questions? Um, Ed, <laughs> recruiter. Oh, that is a great question. I'm glad you asked it. Thank you very much. I'm sure that's on a lot of people's minds. Um, so the short answer to your question is um, some will, some some recruiters, a lot of recruiters are typically fairly knowledgeable about LinkedIn, but this is not universally true, of course. Uh, just like any population, you can't necessarily ascribe any particular skills or traits to every member of that population. So with that caveat be in mind, um, this is not a practice that I normally use. I will follow hashtags that are relevant to myself, to the organization, to the kinds of positions that I'm looking to fill. Um, however, I'm not typically looking for those comments as a general rule uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's a lot of content that gets uh, rolled up into the hashtags. I mean, the really big important hashtags that are of interest to you are have so much content associated with it that it's very difficult to keep, keep right. on top of it all. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and it, it's just kind of trying to sip from a fire hose, you know? Uh, yeah. So that's kind of the challenge in, in the approach that you're talking about. Now, there may be times when I have, I'm looking for something very specific. You know, for example, let's say I am seeking someone who knows all about robotic process automation, which has been a very, really interesting topic in certain leadership circles in the last few years. Um, so if I were to follow that hashtag, anybody who's talking about it, that could potentially be interesting to me because adoption of that particular uh, process and, and uh, methodology is not especially widespread right now. So in very in corner cases, yes, this might make a great deal of sense. Uh, but for your for your more uh, typical kinds of circumstances, uh, the, just the volume of content will just will make it extremely challenging to to get uh, glean any useful insights in, in my in my opinion. Yeah, totally agree. That's and I point. see Kenneth. Kenneth, Ling, uh, Kenneth Lang um, made a great comment there. He says that um, he's saying that various LinkedIn employees are offering six months free premium. Um, so, in terms of free premium, there are there are quite a few things that LinkedIn has been doing for a while. We we already mentioned the um, the, op, the 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 trial, um, the free trial. So you can do it for a month. Um, you can also, if you are a um, U.S. military vet, Perfect, yeah. uh, you oh, can, definitely. yeah, you get, you can, uh, they're actually offering a year, a full year of LinkedIn premium membership. And that's not just to the vets themselves. That's also to the spouses, oh, wow. um, which is, which is quite, could be quite a big deal. And that's um, uh, within six months of the end of service. Mm. So that's, that's a, a, an important freebie for for U.S. military um, vets and their spouses. Um, you can also utilize LinkedIn groups. I, I, you know, one thing that they, they're, they're still good for, uh, slight dig, is that – sorry, Ed, couldn't help it. <laughs> slight dig. 
that what they're still good for is if you're a member of a group, you have an, allow- an allowance of, of 15, one, five, uh, in mails that you can send to fellow group members. So you could, you could, you could switch, right? You could join as many different groups as you want and keep switching. You get them and you can join up to a hundred. But if you find a target, someone that's, you know, in a, in a target company, let's say, not, let's not call them a target. If you need someone who's potentially going to help you, you, you browse their profile, you see which groups they're, they're a member of, then you join, uh, one or some of those groups. You get into the group, let's say, hopefully, pretty quickly you can then message them as as a group member mm-hmm. um so you can you, you know that's that's free uh, another another case of free and that's a fi- that's a monthly allowance of 15 um obviously don't use all 15 on the same person because then that would, <laughs> that would be so stalker-esque um use that that allowance um wisely uh, and then the other free um is that you can um lost my train of thought yeah th- some premium members, um, LinkedIn were a bit, bit sneaky, a bit naughty about this, but they, they used to be a thing, or there still is a thing called open profile. Ed knows what I'm talking about, but open profile, um, used to be on your profile as a badge, part of your premium, which you could proudly display. And what it means is that you can, in, in essence, you can send that person who has the premium account, you can send them a free in mail. Right. So it costs nothing to send them an in-mail. You, you don't have to be connected, so it's not messaging. An in-mail if they have open profile switched to open. And I say LinkedIn were naughty. Well, yeah, they took it off. So now no one knows that, you know, oh, I can send an email to Andy. I can send an email to Virginia, Hannah, or, or Ed. Mm-hmm. You don't know. So if you don't know, then you try it. Right. You try it. And then guess what? You don't get charged for that in mail because it just goes through. So that's another freebie that you should uh, you should all be aware of, especially job seekers. Um, And in terms of reaching out, I agree with what you all said earlier that I think the first couple of days of last week, people were just so mind boggled that I don't know that that was the right time to be reaching out. But this week, people are settling in a little bit. Certainly next week will be continue to do so. Um, if you don't have LinkedIn, um, you can search for their emails through other ways. Um, Austin Belchek through Cultivated Culture yes. has an amazing tool called MailScoop.io, and you can. I have yet to see an email that is not correct. Um, so you can fish for the emails, try to reach out to people that way. Twitter is another great platform, um, but use LinkedIn to search for them. It's the world's greatest CRM in my mind. Absolutely uh, for that, and then. And then LinkedIn Learning, if you do a search on uh, LinkedIn Learning on Twitter, right, just those two words, LinkedIn Learning, you'll find the LinkedIn Learning account, and they're doing a lot in terms of free courses, right? So it used to be Mm -hmm. Linda. They acquired Linda. And, um, for example, they're now running 16 online courses completely free on working remotely. Um, And so everything under the umbrella of working remotely, uh, right the way down to – um, making the most of the, your time, and there's some uh, some skill courses there as well. I forget, but so yeah, look on look on Twitter specifically, LinkedIn Learning, and then that'll take you to the 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 the, the page for what LinkedIn are doing in terms of offering free learning. Why wouldn't you do that? You're at home, mm-hmm. and you want to. I was going to say level up. I don't want to say level up. I'm going to say <laughs> skill up. Skill up. There you skill go. Up. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead and answer Stephanie's question. I've recently taken a job at a mid-sized university as a career coach. This information is very helpful. Thank you. Um, do you have any specific advice for graduating seniors anxious about the job search process at this time? Um, I can start if that works. Um, I usually re- do not recommend, as we said earlier, to apply online as your first point of entry. i recommend a 90, 10, 80, 20 max split where 80% of your time is networking, 20% is online. Um, but those do look at, I'm, I'm now shifting that strategy a little bit, telling people to new grads as well, look at postings that, that came out in the last few days. Those are more pressing and more urgent. Um, 
I, there's going to be more need for sort of frontline people, I think, um, more entry level people with certain industries. So if, I would definitely advise new grads to be strategic in what they're looking at. Um, make sure their resumes and can pass through applicant tracking system. Make sure their names aren't in the headers. Um, make sure that um, make you know, run it through some software to make sure that it will not get kicked out of applicant tracking software. If they have any questions, um, there's tons of articles on that. Um, but this is just as good time as any for um, college kids also to get their profiles up, get on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. Who wants, to, who wants to add on to that? Yeah. I, I would just say, say that I've, I've, I wrote a, an article last year specifically targeting LinkedIn uh, sorry, not LinkedIn, uh, specifically targeting uh, new grads and, and indeed college students. And I honed in on the about section and I, I highlighted, uh, I think it was five or six um, summaries now called about because LinkedIn loves to change these things. Um, but I highlighted these five or six because they did a really good job um, in terms of where they're at now in terms of just beginning right a nascent career and i think that the, the biggest issue often with with folks who are just starting off um uh, in, in workland is well what do i write here i mean i don't have any experience mm -hmm. and these folks these folks understood the brief and they 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 basically did a very good job so i would say do a google search on linkedin um summary graduates you'll find my article or you'll find or just go straight to linkedinsites.com and you'll find that article and then just look to see what these folks have done and and use that as your cue um have your son use that as a, as, as as a cue and and basically follow their example and i think i think he'll nail the about section um but that's the most important as well as having you know a, a decent professional looking uh, headshot um, by the way, you could you could do a headshot at home now because the tech is there again. IPhone, if you have an iPhone, iPhone portrait. And portrait mode, mm -hmm. you, you're good to go, frankly. Yeah. Uh, and you and of course it's free, and you can keep doing it until you find the perfect shot. Yeah. And then you know, don't just take your own word for it. Get multiple opinions of people you trust. Hey, should I put this on LinkedIn? I don't know. What are what are other people doing on LinkedIn? Let let me check. Well, actually, yeah. That looks really good. And so technology is your friend. It's You've got a, a very decent camera on your phone if you've got the latest phone and you've got the software to actually take portrait shots. Um, and also there's actually built-in editing on the LinkedIn platform itself to make that shot look absolutely excellent. So it's just you. Um, it's nothing else in the background, ideally a white background, so it's not distracting. Um, it's not you and your dog. It's not you and your kids um, or, or, or you in a bow tie, right, um, or you with a celeb. It's just you uh, looking handsome, beautiful, well-presented, and professional. Yeah, and I know um, even this applies to juniors as well, people that are worried about their getting internships for to be able to have something on their resume. Um, when I do new grad resumes, I make sure to ask them about classes and courses that they were proud of, papers that stood out. Um, it's not all about the internships. Um, leadership in Greek life, in clubs, um, there's a lot you can dig into if you are, um, if your college kid is not able to get, you, you know, unpaid internship experience right now because of what's going on. Because college kids are homebound too right now. Exactly. Great advice, Virginia. Well, I think Hannah's on mute. Okay. Um, all right. So last question. I know we're running late. Um, so those of you who are on this call that have been late, if you have been laid off or fear being, being laid off, what, what advice do you have for them in terms of hitting the ground running and trying to land as fast as possible? I think it depends on their financial situation. Right. Um, unemployment is supposed is, is very hard to get into the system, at least in New York State, because there's so many claims. Um, uh, it really, you know, if you have to have a job tomorrow, then, yes, there are lots of companies that are hiring 
jobs right now. Um, there, there are the Amazon distributor, there's the Walmart, all of the retail are needing people to not just work the front, but to work the back in unpacking stuff and getting that going. So um, I would definitely, you know, if money's an issue and you don't want to want to claim unemployment at this point in time, then go out and get one of those jobs because they're hiring right now and they need you now. Right, so you could start right away. But if money's not an issue and you're okay, you can ride it out for a couple more months with financially. Then I would definitely go back to this whole process of getting getting your network going, identifying target companies, really fine tuning the paperwork, your resume, your LinkedIn profile, laying that foundation. Make sure you've got your pitch down. Make sure you've got all of that really good your stories, right? That you've got all that stuff ready to go, so that when stuff does really open up, that you're ready. That, you're, that you've laid some of the groundwork, you're not going to be spending hours and weeks and months trying to get your resume done. Do it now so that it's ready for when you are hitting the, round, hitting the ground and applying for jobs. But I don't even think that, that they're not going to be applying for jobs. I think there's still some jobs out there right now. I'm, I'm hiring plenty of people right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just saw on, uh, I guess, job scan. I'm on their mail list, and they said that one of the things they're seeing is that people are hiring, but it's hard to reach the candidates. Um, so make yourselves available. Um, you know, follow the hashtags, get your do- documents ready, figure out who you need to contact. This is the time to get everything together because when things, yeah. when we're let out of our houses, things are going to come roaring back. There's and make sure of that. And make sure the, the information that you have on your profile page, your LinkedIn profile page, matches that of your resume, right? So check your, check your dates, check your employer uh, name, all of that good stuff. Just make sure that they, they are they – are, they, they, He was giving you, he was you know, up he you. pointed up like the Brady Bunch. Like he loved you. He liked what he was like, what, what Andy's saying, no, I, what Andy's saying. Oh, okay, right. That's good. I thought it was, I thought it was just complaining about the the upstairs the upstairs neighbor being too loud and British. Uh, yeah. So so yeah. Make 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 sure that info matches, and also think about um, doing skill assessments. LinkedIn is doing this uh, this sexy cool new thing where you can actually uh, be submit yourself to examination for specific skills. And that skill set is, is increasing all the time in terms of what they're allowing you to test. Mm -hmm. And then once you pass, um, and you get over 70%, it's, it's an option, uh, for you to actually add a skill badge on your profile in the skill section next to that skill, which basically is a, uh, quite a big, um, uh, proof, right. Um, to say social proof, but it's, it's proof that you actually have that skill. Uh, so I think that's a, a great thing that LinkedIn are doing to uh, improve the credibility of uh, the skill section. Um, and, you know, I won't mention endorsements because they still have a lot of work to do uh, to do there. Well, thank you all so much. We've run a little bit over. I know it's time for some of you to go eat dinner. Um, but thank you all for joining. Um, I'm going to make this recording available on my page. I'll share it with all of you so you can share on your pages. But thank you again. Thank you. Thank so you. Guys. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thanks, Hannah. Bye, guys. You've been listening to Resume Storyteller with Virginia Franco. To learn more about storytelling strategies to catch the eye of today's skim online readers, hiring and decision makers, go to www.virginiafrancoresumes.com.